you explained executive functions to me and it changed the way I looked at everything, not just at how I looked at my child and my child's progress, but it made me look at myself and say, do I use these tools to be more effective and efficient in my life? And I saw that I wasn't, and I will admit to you that I still don't use them like I should, but honestly, I get so much more done in my life as a result of having that conversation with you than I did beforehand. So much more. You're just a little more cognizant now of all the variables, huh? And well, you think that, about them all. Yes. I, I mean, I'm, I'm cognizant of it. And, uh, and I do think that awareness is part of it. But I also felt empowered, like, well, I have the ability to change that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that that's, that's not just something huge. you come to the plate with. And sorry, this is just how I am. I'm disheveled and... Uh, disorganized. And <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I am. Saying that's I how am you are. frequently disheveled right, and, and disorganized. That's just me, and so right. that's just the way it's going to be. You know. And, <laughs> yes, and that, and exactly, and and you know that I am frequently somebody who's running behind. And uh, you know, I, just yesterday I was saying all day yesterday I was running to catch up with my rear end. You know, <laughs> because I was just behind. So I'm not saying that I do it every day. But even yesterday I was thinking to myself, okay, what's happening? What did I not attend to because I don't want to feel this way every day and I don't feel that way every day anymore. Um, so, and, and talk, and believe me, I've been to lectures and I've taken, you know, the, the little, you know, Stephen Covey's seven high, highly effective habits of highly effective people. I, you know, I've watched these programs and I've been to conferences and people yeah. talk about these things, but quite honestly, working on it with you and talking to you made a bigger difference than all of that put together. Wow. That's a really big compliment. Thank it you. is a big compliment. <laughs> and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you come in today and talk about executive functions and in particular, why the executive function curriculum and skills is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I feel that it's a huge disservice in life that people talk about this f just for kids. And that they talk about it in particular for kids with autism. It's great. Don't get me wrong. It's great for kids and it's great for kids with autism. But I actually think that that curriculum should be taught to every single junior high school student in the world. Do you want to know actually what population it's mainly talked about with? It's not autism. Really? Yeah, ADHD. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So even when we were developing the executive functioning curriculum, we were consulting books that were written for executive function skills for children with ADHD. Okay. And things like that. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, it's important for everyone. It's important for adults. It's important for all ages. Yeah. It just so happens that you know, we come from CARD and CARD kind of started with younger children right. and as we've evolved, we're now working with, you know, adolescents and adults. Right. But um, the curriculum that we developed, you know, a lot of these executive function skills start at a young age. Yeah. But they just kind of progress over time in terms of what they look like and what your expectations are and things yeah. like that. But honestly, as an adult reading through the curriculum, I learned things. <laughs> yeah. That's um, great. That Good. I was not good at, and that, and I realized, oh, I never really thought about it that way before, but I could think about it that way and I don't have to be a victim of myself, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. but how often have we, and quite honestly, and, I, and can I say even further than that, uh, I had a friend who was saying, well, this is just who I am. And I said to her as a result of our conversation about this, no, you, you know, that's not who you are. Who you are is this loving, generous, fabulous, intelligent, funny, fabulous person, but your habits, <laughs> your behavior lead you to this kind of thing and you choose it, but that's not who you are. And I think she changed some of the stuff that she was doing as a result. So it's far reaching. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't I love that? that? Yeah. Okay. So what are we talking about? Uh, okay. Explain to us what executive functions are and how they rule our lives. Okay. Well, um, usually people look at talking about executive function as goal directed behavior. So um, that's kind of sounds broad. Um, it doesn't, it may not be that helpful. I remember you kind of looking at me with a glazed over look like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yes. um, but basically it's the part of you that plans and organizes and keeps your attention on focus and inhibits distractions. And if there's a problem that comes about when you're trying to, you know, reach this goal, you're going to be flexible and be willing to switch and do something else if it's not working and problem solve and all these kind of things intertwine. There's actually a visual we can show um, right now to show the different kind of domains of executive function 
functioning. Um, so you see them up there. These are the things I was just talking about. And I remember telling you this too back then and you still kind of were like, okay, I think I might get it. And I remember you asking me a couple questions mm -hmm. or whatever and me thinking like, oh, she's still not 100% <laughs> getting this. So I gave you an example. Yes. And I think that was probably where the light kicked on. Yeah, yeah? all the lights in the house came on. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I said, um, imagine that it would be like if you were going to go see someone speak at a conference and you as a parent, this is your goal, they're going to talk about autism and you can't wait to go there. Maybe it's like uh, an hour away drive. Um, so there's a lot of things you have to do. Your goal is to get there to watch this presentation. It's very important to you. So you going through these different domains. Um, if if we can bring up the visual again, I'll kind of go through them with the example. Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, you have to uh, plan a little bit by coming up with what the goal is. I want to be at this presentation. Uh, it's going to happen tomorrow at 8 a.m. You have to think about, well, how long's the drive and which way am I going to go? So there's all that planning right. and figuring out, you know, when to set your alarm and blah, 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 all that. Then um, let's say now it's time for you to start to engage in this behavior the next morning to get there. And you're getting ready to get there and you know you have to attend to the right things or else you're going to get distracted. And if there are distractions, you have to inhibit right. interacting the with The phone them. rings and you have to say to yourself, I'm not going to answer that. Yeah, exactly. So that's where you bring in the inhibition. Right. Um, and then let's say that we are now also um, having to remember certain things. We right. might bring in our memory like, oh, I wanted to bring this or that or you whatever. You have to bring your registration card. Yeah. You can't get in without it. Yeah. Um, and then let's say now you're maybe driving there and you're on your way and you see that an exit has been closed or there's been an accident right. or something like that. So um, you have to use your problem solving. Right. Um, and you might also have to be flexible because maybe things are not going exactly how you thought they were going to go right. and be okay to generate some new solution or alternative, not just continue doing the same old thing. Sometimes right. people get stuck in these patterns. It's very interesting. We all Even though do. they know it's not working. Right. You know? um, and so... I'm not sure if I made it all the way around the diagram with all of the domains, but for the most part, all these things kind of intertwine and play together. The metacognition, I think, was the one. The metacognition is the self-management. Right. So that would be like uh, monitoring your own performance and evaluating and thinking like, uh, what did I do and did it work and what can I do next time better? Yeah. Um, and keeping track of your behavior. And of course, all of this could also go for anything else. Like if you yeah. have a goal, like you want to make it to, you know, a child, let's say an adolescent wants to be on student council. Yeah. What are the s steps I need to do to take that? And all of that is part of your executive functioning skills. And so like we always joke around about how, um, you know, like when we're putting people on projects for things that we're developing for skills or whatever, uh -huh. we want to put people on with really good EF. We call it EF skills. Right. Because there's a lot of multitasking and shifting yeah. your attention from one thing to another. All that stuff goes into each of those domains of like attention skills. It gets pretty in depth. but It it's, really does. Yeah. When you so. think about all the things that have stopped you from achieving everything that you have ever wanted to achieve personally, you know, what what is it? What skill is it that prevented you? Was it the one of, of being persistent? Was it because you couldn't remember to have the right materials? Was it c because you failed to have a plan and set a goal? Was it because you failed to say, okay, I had some progress, but then I stopped? Yeah. But, you know? And I'm, all of those things you just said are targets in the skills curriculum yes. for executive functioning. It's initiate, like coming up with the plan and the goals and the steps and materials, actually initiating the task, yeah. persisting if there's a problem, yeah. all of these things. It's, it's pretty cool. It's fascinating actually. And to me, it's like any adult could benefit so much from a seminar on this, like a life coaching thing. And that's exactly, I mean, it's a very <laughs> popular thing right now to get a life coach or to get a business coach if you want to do something. And we all acknowledge that if you're an Olympic athlete, you're not going to get the gold medal without a coach. Somebody else who's there and, and, and looks at you and says, hey, you know, this is where you're not getting it, right? And I sort of feel like the EF was the best coaching, that curriculum was the best coaching I'd ever had because it really detailed, mm -hmm. instead of having to guess, you know, these are the steps that you have to do in order to be able to do that. Yeah. And it meant, as I said, it meant so much to me as a person. And I do notice now in my day when something isn't working and I think, which part of this am I falling down on? That's so cool. I love it. And I love that you're applying that. That's amazing. Well, and not only that, I language it that way to my son. 
And even more than that, I language it, you know, I've been directing a play at his school and I language it that way to the other kids. That's cool. That, you know, you have to think this through, you know, you've shown up without your script. <laughs> what are, you know, yeah. okay, what happened? What do you need to do tomorrow to make sure that you have this? What, <laughs> what, what will have to change and what can you do now? Because you're here without the script, but that doesn't mean we're not going to rehearse. Right. We're still, our goal is that we're going to rehearse today so that we get to the day when there's the performance. So what are we going to do? And it's so interesting to watch the kids work through that in like a seven week time period to the point where they're starting to, it, it has effects into other thing. I put my script with my homework and I put my homework by the door. Yeah. So that I wouldn't forget it. Yeah. And it's just, it's an amazing. And that's part of the metacognition self-management yeah. portion. Yeah, we teach them all these strategies to remember to do things, yeah. you know, the stuff we all do. Writing lists to ourselves, post-it notes, taking something by the door. Right. You're, you just touched on so many aspects of the curriculum. Yeah. Um, even like, how do I organize my backpack? Yes. Like kids throw in the papers on the bottom. They get yes. all smashed by the heavy books. Um, yes. And you guys have objects. a handout. You have a yeah. handout for they have that. Little visuals and things like that to teach okay. kids how to organize their school desk, how to, you know, organize their can I make an admission bedroom. that when I went through the handouts and there was the handout for the backpack, which I was like, oh yeah, okay. I never really thought about it that way, yeah. but okay. And then there was the handout for packing a beach bag. <laughs> and I went, I know I would need to see this in a Cosmo magazine. I would, I would turn to that page. I learned something from it. That's so funny. Yeah. The bananas don't go on the bottom. <laughs> you know, like, and there's about putting the sunscreen to the side. It was just, it was great. Like, like small items go in the little zipper. Really area. useful, yeah. useful Funny. stuff. And it made me look at different things. My mom is queen, you know, always had a zipper bag for every individual thing in her purse. If you dumped her purse open, 12 zipper bags would fall out and they were all, you know, and different colors. Skills. Di but, but, you know, <laughs> as a result of that, she didn't teach that to me because she thought that was just going to be something that I picked up along the way. So my purse, it's a little bit better as a result of having seen the handout, but it's not, I still haven't applied it fully to my purse. Uh, it's better. That's but good. I always have receipts coming out of my purse like a crazy person. Um, but in any case, I think a lot of times as a parent, what we're good at, it doesn't occur to us to make sure that we teach it to our children. And what we're not good at, we don't know how to teach to our kids. So I love that curriculum. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of the EF curriculum. Um, and, and I think that we could all be using it. And I encourage parents to go and see what it's about and, and use it with your child. And if you are an individual, uh, more and more of our audience are young people who are on the spectrum and they'll write in and say, what can I be doing? I would encourage you to, to go look at skills, look at the EF curriculum. Yeah. Uh, there are other curriculums that will also be useful to you, even as an adult, even if you're not on the spectrum. Yeah, uh, I know. That's exactly, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, absolutely fabulous. And you guys, you have, uh, the free trial period on skills so that they can go right. and look at it for 14 days, yeah. which is pretty amazing. So I encourage everybody to do that. Fabulous.